How's it going everybody? I was able to get XR back up and running. Um, after the failure, I turned Layer 2 VPN off. So I will, uh, for at least a um, in it, uh, time frame, we're going to stay away from XR. But one of the things we're going to take a look at now is the concept of eTree. Since we've already taken a look at eLAN and the concept of full mesh connectivity. So let's take a minute just to break down this concept so that you're all on the same page. So an eLAN, again, just so everybody's on the same page, is, oops, grab my pen tool, there we go. So eLAN, so if you can, if you look at, uh, take a switch, and you plug in a bunch of devices into this, we'll say this is a, you know, we have a laptop here that's hanging out doing this thing, he plugs in, we have another laptop here. Don't hate me for my drawing, I'm not an artist. Don't claim to be one. And do something like this, and this right here. If everybody, if dot one, dot seven, dot nine, and dot twenty one can all talk to each other through this switch right here, this is what they call an ELAN. Full mesh connectivity, right? Well, if we were to flip this script and change it up to be like this, and have it set up to where it is still as a local area network like operation, but if we had it where we did, let's say a router connects here, a router connects here, a router connects here, and a router connects here, what'll end up happening is dot one and two are reachable uh, to everybody, but we do dot three and dot four, so let's draw connections here. This one right here between three and four, right here, this connection right here is not working. But connections between two and three and two and four and one and three and one and four, these are working. So the green lines indicate full mesh connectivity. Oops, I meant to go do this one as well. So any green line connectivity is full mesh, or is connections, which means that the roots, so this would be the root side, the roots, and then we have the leaves. Leaf here and leaf here. The leaves will not be able to talk to each other. Communication between these two are not allowed. So not gonna happen. But the communication between the roots is just fine. So the root and the leaves will be able to communicate with each other and the roots will be able to talk to each other. But communication between the leaves will not work. And this, my friends, is what they refer to as a hub and spoke design. And that's what we're gonna go do. We're gonna make CSR1, this will be a, uh, let me go ahead and clear the screen off real quick. This will be a root, root, this will be a root, and this right here will be a leaf. And this right here will be a leaf. That'll be the connectivity that we have in play. And that's going to be how we go forward here. So with that being said, we're going to go create a new connection. It's going to be, uh, we're going to do a VPLS, but we're going to be specific as to how we do stuff. So let me just, let me uh, actually finish drawing this out a little bit better so that we understand what's what. So from a CSR1 perspective, so I'll just drop here, draw this up here in the left-hand corner. So uh, CSR1 and CSR7 will be able to communicate with each other. And then we have CSR3 and CSR5. These guys will be able to talk to each other and so will these guys. Draw a little bit longer of a line. This will be full, this connection's here. And then we'll have this connection here like this. This will be the connectivity, but connectivity between them, between CSR5 and CSR3, this will not work, okay? Just so everybody understands the flow logic of how we're gonna do this. Let me go ahead and swap, uh, swap this out and let's go ahead and grab my command line. So it brings a secure CRT up and we're gonna create a new set of uh, connect connections. So we will be able to talk with a a different subnet, we're going to use the 200, uh, the, the service instance 200 encapsulation.1q200. 
So we're going to start on CSR1. I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way. And we're going to go up here. And what I'm going to do is on CSR2, or I'm sorry, um, the roots, we're going to use the new con, uh, construct. And on the leaves, we're going to use the old construct, so the L2 VFI manual, and go through all that. So on CSR1, I'm going to create interface, pseudo wire, and I'm going to create um, 213. We'll say 200, and this will be 13 from CSR1 to CSR3. Encapsulation MPLS. Neighbor will be 10.0.0.3, and the will be 213. And then we're going to go do pseudo wire uh, 200 to 17. Encapsulation will be MPLS, and then my destination will be uh, 10.0.0.7 to 213 or 217. And then we're going to go do a connection to, we've done three, so we'll do five, so 15. Encapsulation is MPLS, and then we're going to specify this to go to five, and this will be 15. So we have all that squared away. Then we're going to go to interface gig three. We're typing service instance 200. Uh, do show run interface gig three. Right, okay, so interface gig three, service instance 200 ethernet. Encapsulation dot one Q is going to be 200. Dot one Q, 200. And exit out of that. And then we're going to type in layer two VPN. Um, VFI 200 context. Context. Uh, oh, that's right, 200. And then we're going to type in the member is going to be, or uh, the VPN ID is going to be 200. The neighbor, or I should say in this case here, the member will be pseudo wire 200, uh, 13, 15 and 17 respective, respectively. And then we're gonna go type in uh, bridge dash domain 200. And then we're gonna type in member of VFI 200 and then member of serv gig three service instance 200. And then we've got that guy squared away. Okay. The next one we're gonna do is CSR7 do the exact same thing. Okay, go to global config. We're going to type in interface pseudo wire 200 and we're going to do 17. Encapsulation MPLS. Neighbor is 10.0.0.1 217. Hit the up arrow a couple times and we're going to go, this one's going to be 37 from CSR3 to CSR7. So 37. Encapsulation is MPLS and then we're going to go 3 to 37 and then. Interface, this will be 57, 57, and then we'll do MPLS, and then 5 to 57. And there we go. So now we're going to go to interface gig 3, service instance 200 Ethernet, encapsulation dot 1Q is 200, and then we're going to go specify um, L2 VPN VFI Context is 200, VPN ID of 200, member pseudo wire will be 217, 37, 57. And then we'll type in bridge dash domain 200, and then member VFI 200, member gig 3 service instance 200. So there we have that. So now we're going to jump down to uh, CSR3. CSR3 will be uh, L2, let's go to interface gig four. No, I'm sorry, in this case it would be gig six. Service instance is going to be 200 ethernet, encapsulation.1q 200, and then we're going to specify bridge domain 200. Exit out of there, and then L2 v, uh, VFI 200 uh, manual, and then we're going to specify neighbor, uh, a VPN ID of 200, neighbor, neighbor will be uh, 10.0.0.1, .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and then 
And then the BCID here will be 200. And this will be 13. Encapsulation will be MPLS. So that should come up here momentarily. Uh, let me just verify that that's actually set up correctly. Do show run interface pseudo wire 213. Yes, that is set up correctly. So let's go to under CSR3, and then we're also going to do 1 to 7, and this will be 37. And then we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. So uh, we actually, sorry, I need to go in underneath here real quick. And we're going to specify uh, bridge domain 200. There we go. So now we should be able to get the VCID. There we go. So there we go. Um, now we're going to go uh, do show run section uh, L, uh, L2. And we can take this line of config right here and we can tweak it around a little bit. So I'll grab this line of config right here. I'm going to go grab notepad. Notepad. And we're going to paste this config in like so. I'm also going to go grab, um, I'm going to go up to the top here and interface gig3. Type in service instance 200 ethernet and then encapsulation 200.1q200 and then bridge domain 200 and then come down here and then this will be bridge dash domain 200 but instead of doing this we're going to say one in seven is going to be who we're going to peer to but this time we're going to say this will be 57 and this will be 35 because I believe that's what I specified on CSR3. Oh no I did uh, no sorry it's going to be CSR1 my, my apologies that's going to be do show run interface pseudo wire 215 215 so it's going to be going here this will be 15 so that should be everything that I need to have in play in order for this to work so I'm going to come up here I'm going to go to CSR5 and I should be able to copy and paste this config in just like so and then I'll exit out and we should form pseudo wires based off those configs, assuming that I've done everything correctly. So if I jump out of global config, and one should pop up a connection. So show L2 VPN Adam VC. Okay, so I have a connection. So pseudo wire, this guy's, no, I'm sorry, this one is up. So if we do show L2 VPN VFI, and then uh, we're going to say name of 200, the pseudo wires appear to be up. So then if we go to show bridge dash domain 200, we haven't learned any traffic yet. And that's because we haven't configured the, the other side. So we haven't configured the CE side. So if we go to router one, go to global config and type in interface gig 0.0.200 encapsulation.1q200 IP address of 10.1.200.1 slash 24. Go ahead and move this off screen because we don't need that anymore. We go to um, router 3 here and we go to global config we go to uh, interface gig interface gig 2.200 encapsulation.1q200 dot dot IP address of 10.1.200.3 slash 24 and then we go over to router 4 
go ahead and move this up a little bit so it's easier to see. We go to inner case, I'm sorry, inter, or I'm sorry, that's not four. It's, yes, it is four. Um, interface gig zero slash zero dot 200 encapsulation dot one Q 200 IP address of 10.1.200.4 slash 24. And then we're gonna be able to go to router five and then it'll be config T interface gig zero slash zero dot 200 encapsulation dot one Q 200 IP address of 10.1.200.5 slash 24. So now what should end up happening is if I go to router one, which is attached to the CSR one, and I ping 10.1.200.3, I should be able to ping CSR three or router three, and I can. I should be able to ping router four. And I can't, I should be able to ping router five. And I can. Now from router five's perspective, I should be able to do the same thing. I should be able to ping. If we go to CSR one and we do hit the up arrow, we should have bridge domains are being populated now, which is good. Now we go to router five and I ping, control C out of that, ping 10.1.200.1. That should work. Three should work. And so should four. And it does. Now, what will not work is if I go to router three and I try to ping 10.1.200.4. This should fail. I should not get any ping results from this guy. Because remember, we're talking E tree. Spoke to spoke communication is not allowed in the E tree design. So you could run, if your service provider was willing to work with you, you could do a hub and spoke design where you go through and the hubs are able to communicate with, uh, with one another, but the spokes are not. You could do DMVPN or some other type of mechanism over the top. Here we're just controlling it at layer two. So if I go to router one though, I should be able to ping that, I should be able to ping router five, but I'm not able to ping router three. Well, let's just see if that's a fluke. If I ping 10.1.2, 200.1, I should be able to ping this one, and I should be able to ping five, but I should not be able to ping three. And I'm not. Ping, this, the pings to that are not supported. So here, if we again, if we do this, if we go down to CSR5, and we do a show bridge dash domain 200, we can see that we have only connections to the hubs is where we're, we're peered to, one and seven. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the E-Tree design. Now, everything that we've shown you or talked about up to this point has been manually configured, right? We haven't done anything extravagant in the config. We're gonna switch gears in the next video or so to flip over to BGP Auto Discovery and how that will come into play. Now, what I won't be doing is I won't be going into a long dissertation as to how BGP goes through the process of allocating labels, because to be honest with you, the process is actually rather involved and I don't fully understand it. But at the end of the day, if somebody wants to do BGP signaling versus LDP signaling, they're not gonna know the difference. The customer won't know. The only difference between the two is BGP allocates labels a little bit differently than LDP does, but whether you're doing LDP discover or LDP signaling or BGP signaling, it really makes no difference in my opinion. So knowing how to configure this stuff is more valuable than that as far as I'm concerned right now. So that's pretty much that. Until next time guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me and we'll catch you guys in the next video.